Greetings everyone. Welcome to the MOOCs course of Machine Learning and Deep Learning Fundamentals and Applications. I am Vivek Goswami, the teaching assistant for this course. I am a research scholar in the AAA department of IIT Guwahati under the supervision of Professor M.K. Bhuyan. Today, we will start our problem solving session on Naive Base Classifier, uh, Linear Regression for Univariate and Multivariate case and we will be looking into maximum likelihood estimation and support vector machine in this class. So, let us start today's session and solve the problems here. So, the first question we are having is a that find the linear regression equation for the following sets of data. So, we are given a dependent variable and an independent variable. So, x is our independent variable and y is the dependent variable and we know we can represent the equation of the dependent variable like this, where A represents the slope of the line and B represents the intercept of the line. Now, there are formulas through which we can find the A and B. So, for A, we know that we have the formula of Where here n is the total number of samples similarly we have a formula for b Now, to calculate this A and B, we have to first uh, make a table for this x y x square and the find the summation. So, we will find that out first. So, we will make a table for x and y. the x values we have is 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. So, the x square values we will have is similarly the x y values we will have is 7, 4 is 28, 30 and 80. So, we will find the sum of all of them. This will sum up to 20, this will sum up to 25, 120 and 144. So, this table we are having right now. Now, in this formula, we will put these values and we will see what x and uh, a and b values we get. So, putting the values in the formula, formula of a we are having is So, so we we know that we have this sum values for sum of x. This is summation of x. This is summation of y. This is summation of x square, and this is summation of x y. These values we are having. So, if we put these values here, and our n here will be. N here will be four because we have four number of samples. So, in this formula if we put the values, so we will put n equal to 4, 
we have seen the summation of xy is 144 so what values we will get is Again for B, we will find out So, the equation of this line will be so this will be the slope of the line and 1.5 will be the intercept of the line. So, this will be basically our regression line that we will be getting here. So, let us move to the next problem. So, this is basically a univariate case where we have only one dependent independent variable or a feature and a one dependent variable. Now we will be looking into a problem where we have two independent variables and one dependent variable. So, let us say it is x 1, it is x 2 and this is y. So, this value we have to predict from the data of these two values, this and this, x1 and x2. So, similarly, we can represent this one like this. Where a and b will be the slopes and again c will be the intercept of the plane. Here we want to have a line and we will have a plane because we have two independent variables and one dependent variable. So, here we will not be having a line and rather we will having a will be having a plane. So, let us see how we can solve this. So, as we have seen we can represent it like this. So, we can write like say y can be written as a x plus b and this can be represented like this. If y have values so we will be having x 1 and x 2 values say x 1 1 x 1 2 x 2 1 3 1 x 4 1 and we will have be having a bias. This we have already seen in the uh, previous videos. So, I will tell you how can we find this term. So, this can also be written like this. So, if we include the bias also here, so we will be having a bias term say a naught. So, these are a naught values a 1 will be the uh, in first intercept and second one will be the second intercept and we can find this like this. So, let us see how we will do that. So, we will be using a method known as pseudo inverse. to find out. So, in pseudo inverse what how we can find out the coefficients is using this method. So, we have x transpose of x 
we will find out the inverse of that multiply with the x transpose again and then multiply this whole thing with y. So, for this a we will be having three values we will be getting a naught a 1 and a 2. So, our line will be represented like this. similar to this one. So, let us start finding out. So, we have our x see 1 2 3 4 4 5 8 2 1 2 3 4 4 5 8 2 and this is the bias term that we have to include as I have already explained you. Now, we have our y here. So, let us find out x transpose So, if we multiply this two matrix, we will be getting these values. Now, what will be our next step? So, we will be find this inverse, inverse of this x transpose x. So, if we find the inverse of this matrix, the values we will be getting is this one. Please check the calculations by yourself once. So, this is the inverse that we have got. Now, again what we have to do? We have to find out this x transpose x inverse into x transpose. So, we will find it out. So, say x transpose x inverse into x transpose. and we will obtain a matrix again which will be of this shape.
Now, again what is our next step to find this one? We will have the whole value of this multiplied with y. So, once we do that, we will be getting this value. So, this will be our a naught, this is our a 1 and this is our a 2. So, we can represent this line like this. This with, with the regression plane that will fit this multivariate case. So, this was the question that find the linear regression equation for the following data which we have obtained here. As we have obtained here the same linear regression variable, but it was for a single variable and this is for a multivariable case. So, that is all we are uh, dealing with linear regression right now. Next we will move to another problem of Bayesian classification. So, here we will be looking into the naive base classifier. So, let us look into the question. So, it is told that estimate the conditional probabilities of each attribute. So, these are the attributes or the features and this is the value that needs to be predicted. So, says this is a species. So, m is one species and h is another species as species class. So, through the data in the table, we have to predict for this new instance and before that we have to find the conditional probability of each of the uh, attribute. So, let us first find out the priors. So, what priors are? We can see what is the uh, class that we need to predict. So, what is the probability of m species? So, it will be we have total 8 number of samples of where 4 are coming to be m. So, it will be 4 by 8. Similarly, for each species we will be having. So, we have obtained our prior. Now, let us start with color. So, in making a table. we have color. What are the colors available here? White and green, right? And we have two, spe two species H and L. So, let us see how many M are there total? Four. Of which how many are white? So, 1 and 2, 2 out of 4. Similarly, how many H are white? So, we have total 4 number of H and how many of them are green? Oh, sorry, white, it is 3. So, similarly, for green also we can write and we can make similar table for legs as well. So, in legs also they can either have two leg or three leg and again we have two species M and H. So, how many M have two legs? It is one out of four and how many H have two legs? It is four out of four. All the H have only two legs. Similarly, this we can make. Again, we will make for smelly. You can pause the video and make this table yourself as well. And you can verify with my one.
so i'll tell you what now we have seen that we have found the conditional probabilities but what is actually the conditional probability so the conditional probability is given an attribute we have to look at the probability of an attribute given a species so this is what a conditional probability is and you can see in this four tables we have calculated this one. so that's what you will see that every class every species when we sum up we'll get one so this probabilities will sum up to one not this ones because these are not conditional probabilities when we sum this up we'll get one because we always know that the probability sum up sums up to one and this is the conditional probability so even conditional probabilities for a same species will sum up to one so for this individual species say m or h the probability in every case is summing up to one so i hope that much is understood so now we have found out the first one the conditional probability now in the second part of the questions we are asked to estimate the probability for this new instance okay so we know by bayes theorem given the species is m and this new instance what we can write similarly so you already know that this is the normalizing term and it won't actually affect your classification decision it this we have already seen in the previous classes so for m given new instance we'll just be left with this formula similarly now what was your new instance that color is green have two legs height is tall and it's not smelly okay so looking at this table we'll find out we know the conditional probability we know the priors so we can easily find out that so let's see when the color is green and it is m when the color is green and it is m we have a probability of 2 by 4 this one so it's 2 by 4 again legs 2 and it is m legs 2 it is m 1 by 4 again height tall and it's m it's 3 by 4 and smelly no and m it's 1 by 4 and we have to multiply with the prior of m so the prior probability of m is 1 by 2 so if we calculate this this value will come up to be similarly we will find for h so when it's h and green so for h and green we will 1 by 4 similarly for legs 2 and green will have a probability of 4 by 4 for smelly and h for not smelly and h we'll have 3 by 
and for tall and h we will have 2 by 4. So, subbing this probability together and multiplying with the prior we get the value of now we can see that probability of h given new instance is greater than probability of m giving given new instance. So, in maximum likelihood estimation sorry in Bayesian classification we know that we will always favor the class which has the larger value of the posterior probability. So, in this class this new instance will belong to the species class H. So, you understood this problem? Now, look another look into another problem using maximum likelihood estimation. So, what we have here is that an unfair coin is flipped 100 times and 61 times header observed. An unfair coin is flipped 100 times and 61 times heads are observed. So, what is the maximum, maximum likelihood estimation when nothing is previously known about the coin? So, let us look into this problem. Looking into this that a unfair coin is flipped 100 times and 30 and 61 times head is observed, we can easily identify that this is a binomial distribution. Where we will have the probability of occurrence as p and q as the probability of non occurrence or say failure which will be 1 by p. So, this is the probability of success this is the probability of failure right. So, we can write the PMF of uh, failure say we uh, tell the probability of success when head occurs and failure when head does not occur. Head does not ok. So, we know 61 times had a worker and we do not know the success. So, this is the PMF of a binomial distribution that we know of. This I hope everyone knows. So, now to maximize this, what is the first thing that comes in our mind that we will differentiate it. We will differentiate it with respect to p because we find we have to find the maximum this p for which the likelihood would be maximum. So, this is the likelihood function that we have drawn and now what we will we will do is for this parameter p, we will see what is the maximum criteria that we can obtain. So, going by the product rule of differentiation, we will find out that 
this will be the differentiation that we are getting. Now, to find the maximum or the saddle point, what we will we'll do is we will equate it to 0. So, let us see what we get. So, we know that this cannot be 0. So, what we will be having is sorry. And if we solve this, we will be getting three conditions for P. So, P can take any one of these three values. Now, we will find that for H equal to 61 and P equal to 0, what would be the likelihood? We already know this formula. We have to just put the values of P equal to 0. 61 by 100 and 1 in the formula. So, for p equal to 0, the likelihood would be 0. Again, for p equal to 1, the likelihood would be 0 because this value will end up to be 0. Okay. So, now what about for p equal to 61? Let us find out. So, it will give us a positive value. It does not matter what value it gives, but we know that it would not be equal to 0 ever. So, it will give us a positive value. Since of these three, this is the highest. So, for p equal to 61 by 100, maximum likelihood is achieved. And that was the question, what is the maximum likelihood estimation? Nothing is previously known. So, we know for this parameter p, we will have the maximum likelihood. So, I hope this question is clear as well. Now, we will be looking into a problem of from support vector machine. We know that support vector machine uh, classifies samples into classes by drawing a support uh, decision boundary considering the support vectors. So, we are given this four points belonging to positive class and these four points belonging to negative class. So, positively and negatively labeled data are given. So, let us denote this positive class by plus 1 and let us denote this negative class by minus 1. Okay. So, both belongs to R2. So, it is a plane. So, I have plotted these points here. From these points, from this uh, visualization of the point, we can we can easily guess this this would be the support vectors here as beyond this point there are no before this point there are no points which actually helps in the or affects the decision so, this can be considered to be the support vectors. So, our support vectors we will denote it by S1 would be another support vector S2 will be denoting with S2 will be denoting with and S3 will be denoting with. So, from this one, this plot, we know that S1 belongs to plus 1 class, S2 and S3 belong to minus 1. 
so that much we are clear till now now so these are our support vectors s1 s2 s3 so this support vectors using this support vectors we can find the characteristic equation and the characteristic equation would be like this this is already been explained in the class how this characteristic equations are formed So, we know what S1 and S2 and S3 are, putting those in this equation what we will get is, say this is equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. So, equation 1, I will show for one equation and then I will generalize the issue. So, A1 into, what is S1? So, this is basically a dot product that we are looking at what is s2 3 comma 1 solving this so this is that dot product you know So, similarly for equation 2 we will be obtaining so this three characteristic equation we have obtained now solve as we know we these are basically a series of linear equation and if we solve all of them we will be getting a1 a2 and a3 here right so our a1 will be So, this will be our a1, a2 and a3 that will be getting solving the simultaneous equations. Now, we know the weight vector of support vector machine because support vector machine can also be characterized like this. But this is the weight and this is the bias. Okay. So, the weight vectors can be represented like So, what we will have here, because we will be adding the bias term, so we are having 3. These are the bias terms that we have added. So, this will sum up to, we have added bias here. So, this will represent our B. So, here we will have B minus 2 and W will have us. So, we can represent the equation like, now since we have represented our, our equation like this. so 
this bias term has a negative sign. So, it will denote that if we draw an axis then it will be represented in the first quadrant okay? and this w tells us about the line. So, we can see w is 1 0. So, the x coordinate is y 1 and y coordinate is 0. So, it tells us basically the line will be parallel to the y axis because the y coordinate is 0. Okay? Now, we will see that we have 2 as the bias. So, basically the line should be at this position. Okay? So, this is our decision boundary that we have found out based on our calculations of W as and our bias as minus 2. So, this is the decision boundary hyperplane that can classify these points into two classes negative and positive. Okay? So, that was all about today's session. In today's session, so basically what we have seen, first we started with linear regression where we have seen linear regression for a univariate case. So, it had only one dependent variable and only one independent variable. Then we have seen same linear regression for multivariate case where two independent variables were there and one dependent variable and we have seen how to solve for those cases as well. Then we have uh, solved a classification problem using a naive based classifier or a Bayesian classification technique where we have found out the conditional probabilities and for a new instance we have shown the class or which class it belongs to. Then we have again seen a problem related to maximum likelihood estimation. We have come to know what is a likelihood and how to estimate that and how uh, for any feature maximum likelihood could be estimated. Again we have seen another classification problem using support vector machine where we have found out what are the support vectors for the data given. We have found out the characteristic equation then we have found out the decision boundary or the hyperplane that is actually separating the classes. So, that is all about today's session more problems will be discussed on the other topics in the coming sessions. So, that will be all. Thank you.